Good morning. I thought that today you might like to, as we do, share our neighbours, uh, Magnolia and Camellia, which are very fine uh, in the picture behind me. At least I hope they're coming out well for you. Uh, we take pleasure in them every day and delight in their beauty. Gardening is wonderful. You can share it and give it away and still have it for yourself. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship today, April the 11th, the second Sunday of Easter. I hope that you have recognised the presence of the risen Christ with you this week, that you've enjoyed the feast of Easter after the absence of Lent. So much to be thankful for. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. He has defeated the powers of death. Alleluia. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Alleluia. He has the words of eternal life. Alleluia. And so we pray. Almighty God, in our worship, help us to hear your word, to give you praise, and to make our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come into the presence of God, aware of his glory and grace, aware of our own shortcomings. So I invite you to join in this uh, confession. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind closed doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us share together in the words of the Collect. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen.
The reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to him again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Jesus, Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have see, seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yes, have come to believe. Now Jesus said many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book. But these were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through him, believing, you may have life in his name. Good morning. As has been mentioned already this morning, we are today remembering the life of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. As we reflect now on the words of Scripture, that we have heard read about Jesus' visits to his followers after his rising from the dead. It is good to remember also that this message of hope in the resurrection of Jesus is for all of us. Whether we have much or we have little, in the face of death Christ bids us not despair, for he has overcome death and offers the same joyous overcoming for any of us, should we but believe in his name. begin I'd just like to remind us something of what we've just heard. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. Wouldn't you love to know what those were? Jesus tended to do some quite exciting stuff so it stands to reason that whatever he did that we don't have recorded was bound to have been equally spectacular. Except as you may or may not already know it is difficult to pinpoint which signs the writer is actually talking about here. This simple sounding verse and the next line about faith and hope have generated all manner of controversy down the years. Which are the signs that John is talking about anyway? No signs are otherwise specifically mentioned in chapter 20. So is the author referring to the rest of the book? 
throughout the rest of the book, he has talked about Jesus' signs, pointing past himself to the reality of God's presence in him. And indeed, it is noted by John and, by the, and elsewhere that the Jewish people of the day, including John's own community, wanted to see, even demanded signs of God's activity in the world. So is John wrapping up the gospel here? Does that mean chapter 21 is a later edition? And so it goes. A point should be made, however, about signs in the Gospel of John. They are never called miracles. Any mighty deeds of power, things that otherwise we might refer to as miraculous, such as turning water into wine, healing someone born blind, or raising someone from the dead, all of these are not frivolous. They are signs. They always signify something, and what they signify is looking beyond the act or event itself to the theological truth behind it. Jesus is who he says he is. John is quite clear, however, throughout the book that despite Jesus' performing and doing many signs, often quite publicly, there was little by way of resulting faith. And this brings us to the nub of the matter. Debates about which signs John is referring to are missing the point. John is adamant that these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Belief, more precisely faith, is what matters. From the point of his resurrection onward, Jesus does not resume his public ministry. He rose from the dead. He conquered death. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But as far as John tells it, he did so with remarkably little fanfare. Instead, John chapter 20 records something still more profound. Not only has he conquered death, but he has drawn those who believe and have faith in him into the presence of his Father, sharing the deepest, most profound relationship there ever is. We are brought into the midst of the communion between the God of ages and the Word made flesh, through whom everything was made. Not only that, but in these various scenes in John 20, Jesus is working out his reality, this reality of theological truth, by commissioning his disciples to continue his public ministry in his stead. He is appointing them to be his witnesses, for them to show the world the glorious wonder of this promise, an open way back to God, the Creator, in self-giving and abiding love, should we only believe. But those signs John mentioned, what are they? Well, in John chapter 20, Jesus rose from the dead. That's a sign. A sign that he conquered death. He appeared to Mary, showing that he still is present as the Good Shepherd. He appears to all the disciples and imparts to them the Holy Spirit, showing that they now share in the public ministry of Christ. He appears to Thomas, who finally sees through the physical sign in front of him, Jesus' scarred body, to the reality that has been there all along. My Lord and my God. Jesus' words to Thomas confirm this by saying, Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Doubt, so long associated with Thomas in his demand for a sign, is in fact not the best translation. In Greek, this has such a poignant emphasis that is lost to us in English. For in English, faith is not a verb. But I wish it could be. Jesus says to Thomas, do not be unfaithing, but faith. This is about the springing up of faith and the joy of Jesus' presence, the spontaneous reaction of exaltation and praise, not only pointing to, but accepting the very presence of the living God into the midst of our lives. Thomas's response of faith, then, is in fact the high point of God's revelation of Jesus. Here is the one in whom all hopes are founded, my Lord and my God. 
And yet, the high point reached, Jesus opens up the promise of this glorious revelation and welcome, not only to those present with him then, but to all who will believe on account of their testimony, on account of what is written in the book. We are blessed, since through believing, we too may have life in his name. We too are his disciples, his followers who learn from him. We too are enfolded into the public ministry of Christ, upon whom is bestowed the Holy Spirit for the conviction of the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, all for the sake of revealing Jesus to the world as the very fullness of God with us. This is a holy calling. In faith we are literally set apart, holy, unto God for this task. It is little wonder then that the new community that Luke also recounts to us, among whom the Holy Spirit dwells, is so radically different to all others around it. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. While we may not live with all things in common, and indeed there remain needy people among us, these passages always stand as a challenge to how and why we dispose of what God has given us. Possessions, wealth, skills and what time we have. How do we use them? For ourselves first and then for others? Or for God first and so for others as well as ourselves? For by faith in Jesus we belong to God. We are his first set apart to the task of Jesus' ongoing public ministry. Sin is still with us. People demand signs or otherwise refuse to see Jesus. But we go out into a broken and needy world with life and hope in the power of God's salvation, life eternal in the love of God. Amen. It is plain that by a life of service, and at many times required to subsume his own desires, Prince Philip offered to us a steadfast example of using what we have for the benefit of others. With this example before us of the energetic pursuit of what is possible, may we all go out today and live most fully into the joy of God's kingdom and the belief and hope in Christ that transforms the world. Let us profess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, you promise to hear us when we pray in faith. Help us to pray simply and sincerely, unselfishly and gratefully, giving thanks always for all things in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Shed his glorious light on all Christian people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. We ask you to be a real and living presence in your church, that through love and fellowship we may continue to testify to our Lord's resurrection. Wherever we are lacking in faith, Strengthen us with your spirit. Lord, 
In your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Lord, at this time of new life and new beginnings, we look to all that is changing in today's world. We pray for our church leaders, that you will guide them in their ministry. We pray for our Queen, for our MPs and those in positions of political power, that they remain focused on what is right and fair, to make decisions that are good for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for peace in our troubled world. Wherever there is suffering through war, violence or unrest, we pray for true reconciliation. With COVID remaining an ongoing threat, we continue to pray for a fair and equitable vaccination programme that reaches all whatever their race or creed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creative Lord, we ask that you bring light into today's ever increasing chaos and darkness where we have failed to be good stewards of your, your creation. At this time when we celebrate new life, help us to protect our resources that we may look to a sustainable future in which we share the fruits of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for families, especially those disrupted by the stress of the pandemic. We give thanks for your son, who raised from the dead, walks with us on life's journey just as he gladdened the hearts of his friends, may those who are struggling turn to him in faith and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, comfort the sick and suffering with your living presence. Heal and strengthen weak bodies, calm confused minds, and reassure the lonely with your company. We bring to you those we know who have special need of you at this time. Silently, we name them in our hearts. Eternal Lord, in the hope of resurrection, we remember those who have passed into eternal life with you. Let us not forget that your son, Jesus Christ, was not constrained by death and that new life in him promises new life for all. Unite us in your love with those we have known, that in your eternal kingdom, life is everlasting. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Queen and the Royal Family as they mourn the death of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. We pray that they may know the joy, hope and comfort of the risen Christ. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of His Royal Highness Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, for the love he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with your servant Philip that clearer vision promised to us in the same Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, 
After the sadness and sorrow of the journey to the cross, we rejoice in the amazing glory of the resurrection. Renew our hope and encourage us to share the love and peace of Christ with all who may cross our paths this coming week. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine be the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we draw our worship to an end, receive the strength and the blessing of God today. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Live in peace as you love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for sharing in our worship today. Please continue to encourage one another with phone calls and letters, bringing those who might feel isolated and anxious a sense of peace and belonging. God bless you.